Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, everyone, um, and welcome to today's athlete webinar. Uh, my name is Ben Sanford, and I'm the chair of WADA's Athlete Committee. Uh, and today's webinar is on WADA's Future Athlete Council, uh, and it's just really to give you a brief overview of how we're transitioning from our current Athlete Committee um, to the Athlete Council, which will start at the beginning of next year. Uh, what steps have been taken so far to create the Athlete Council and what the, the final piece of that puzzle is that's coming up in the next few months. Um, so thank you very much for, for joining us today. Um, this is one of our um, series of webinars for athletes uh, and you know, please follow WIDA's websites uh, and WIDA's press releases to see what's coming up later in the year. Um, so Salva is going to be helping behind the scenes uh, switching the slides. Uh, so Salva, if you could change to the next slide. Um, so two people are joining me today. We have Florence, um, who is joining from Switzerland. I think, oh no, are you in Montreal now? Montreal, yeah. Um, so Florence is what is deputy is a uh, yeah, deputy director, stakeholder engagement and partnerships, um, and has been you know hugely involved um, behind the scenes and in, in making all the rules and making the athlete council come to life. Um, and we also have Stuart Kemp, who's WADA's deputy chief operating officer, um, who again is our main contact from the athlete committee and athlete council into WADA, and you know hugely involved in this process of. Um, this changeover from our athlete committee to the athlete council. So thank you um, to the two of you for joining us. Um, Florence and Stuart will be here um, at the end of the, the webinar to answer any questions. Uh, and I'll be taking you through the, the slides of the webinar. The webinar probably won't take too long. Um, the slides will probably take about 20 minutes. Uh, and then we do have a lot of time for questions. Uh, so. Um, just some housekeeping for you, there, there is the ability for you to ask questions. Um, you can just go to the, the panel um, and there will be a function in there where you can type in your questions. Uh, and so if you have any questions about the, the Athlete Council um, and specifically around what the next steps are, please ask those in there uh, and we'll get to those at the end. Um, the other housekeeping is that there is a privacy policy in place, uh, so um, your information will not be used um, in, in any way by WADA um, unless it's required to. There's also a post um, webinar survey that we send out, so please, um, once you log off this webinar, please um, complete the survey because uh, that's very helpful for us. Um, but we'll get right into this um, and get right into the webinar and start talking to you about the Athlete Council and about Group 3. Uh, so I just wanted to start off today um, by talking a little bit about where we are at the moment. So um, WADA has for a long time now had an Athlete Committee um, and you'll see there on the left that at the moment or since 2019 um, we've been 12 members. So we used to be 17 members. Um, in the governance reform back in uh, 2018 and 2019, we got cut down to 12 members. And so that's our current makeup at the moment. So we have on the wider athlete committee, we have four IOC members um, from their athlete commission. Um, and we have eight non IOC members from um, all around the world and um, different sports and different federations. Um, all of us are appointed. Um, and at the moment, we're appointed by the, the president and the director general of WADA. Um, and they also have to consult with, with me as the, the chairperson. Um, and then I'm the chair uh, and I'm elected by um, the 11 other members on the, the athlete committee. So we've been through um, a lot of governance reviews uh, within WADA. Um, and one of the big things within those reviews has been uh, sorting out athlete representation uh, within WADA. Um, and really with the aim of trying to make it stronger um, trying to make it um, more democratic and bring in elected members. Uh, so the future, um, the Athlete Council, uh, so the, the current WADA Athlete Committee runs until the end of this year. Uh, and then from the beginning of next year, there will be this new Athlete Council. Um, and it'll be bigger, um, which is good because we need um, better representation from around the world and from more sports. So the Athlete Council will have 20 members, and what we've done is we've done we've divided it up 
into three groups. Um, so the first group is uh, four IOC Athlete Commission members, uh, one member from the, the IPC. Uh, so that makes up group one. So those are essentially ex officio members from you know, key stakeholders. Uh, we then have group two, which is eight elected members. And so we've just been through this process and I'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment. Uh, so eight members that have been elected by um, international federations, athlete commissions or committees. And so we've just completed that. Uh, and the last group uh, is seven appointed members. And that's really the focus of today's webinar um, is talking about um, what the makeup of these seven members could potentially be, how this process is going to work, um, how you can apply, um, and everything else you need to know about um, the final steps coming up in the next few months. Uh, next slide, please, Salva. So this is just an overview of the, just to give you some you sort of visual um, demonstration of what the Athlete Council is looking like. So again, those five members from the IOC, IPC, um, eight members are elected by International Federation Athlete Commissions, uh, and then we have the seven appointed members. And so in total, that gives us um, our 20 members. And because it's the, the first year of doing this, um, the inaugural year, um, we're doing everything in one year, which in the future, it'll be staggered. Um, but at the moment, um, because of the transition, we're doing uh, everything at the same time. So once the, the council um, is formed, so it'll be officially formed you know, by the end of this year, uh, then the council will be able to meet and they will be able to elect their, their chairperson, um, their vice chair. Um, they will also be, and the chairperson will sit on WADA's executive committee. They will also be able to appoint two members to the foundation board of WADA, uh, and they will also be able to appoint um, athletes from their, um, from their council to all the other bodies uh, within WADA. So, you know, that's uh, the other standing committees, um, you know, education or finance or, or health, um, and also working groups um, and anything else that's coming up within WADA. So it'll be, you know, a, a good improvement, um, you know, having a vote at the executive committee, having our members on the foundation board, uh, and, you know, also being able to have athletes on all these committees throughout WADA. So that really spreads um, the athlete voice within the organization. Um, but it also means it's going to be a lot of work for the council and for its members. And, you know, I, I hope that anyone that's running for any of these positions will be engaged and really wanting to be involved in WADA and anti-doping because it's a really great chance for athletes to have a say, um, influence policy and influence decision making uh, within, within WADA. Um, so my term finishes at the end of the year um, as the chairperson. So there will be a new chairperson as well. Uh, and the the council will be going through that process, you know, once they're formed at the beginning of the year to, to elect a new chairperson. Next slide. So as you might be aware, we're sort of midway through this forming of a council. Uh, and so we have group one here, which has been um, confirmed by the IOC and, and IPC. These are their members that they've put forward. Um, so that's Humphrey, Emma, Yitzke, um, Martina and Hong. Uh, so they'll be joining the Athlete Council uh, next year. Um, some of them you already know are members of the, the current committee, um, but these are the members that they've put forward to be on the council next year. So those are the five members from the IOC and IPC. Um, the right-hand column is the members who have just in the last week been elected uh, to the Athlete Council. Um, and you'll see there's, you know, athletes from a number of different countries there and, and different sports. Um, so yeah, those eight members will be joining the council. So that gives us 13 members that are confirmed already. Um, and so I think one of the things, if you're looking at uh, applying um, is and I'll get to this a little bit later, because group three is really set up to um, fill the gaps around skills and diversity that don't already exist on the council. You know, a helpful way to look at it is to see, you know, what sports are already covered, which countries are already um, covered, um, and to see if, if your sport or your country or your skills, you know, aren't represented already 
um, in the council. Um, even if they are, I would still encourage you to apply um, because you know we really do need good engaged people um, to be on the council moving forward. So those are our 13 members uh, at the moment. Uh, and if we switch to the next slide, that brings us to, to group three. So those are the that's group one and group two. Um, and group three is the final piece of the puzzle to get our council sorted. Um, the purpose of group three. Um, so group three members are appointed. Um, the purpose of the employment process for group three members is to fill skills and diversity gaps not otherwise sufficiently provided for by groups one and two. Um, thus to ensure that the council can adequately represent athletes and conduct its work. Um, so the key thing here is that, you know, we need to do as good a job as possible of representing athletes. Um, so to do that, we need good diversity across sport and age and country um, and a few other factors which we'll get to. Um, but we also need the skills, you know, WADA is um, the global regulator of anti-doping. Anti-doping obviously and doping has an enormous impact on athletes um, and we want athletes to be involved in you know the decision making processes and those decisions which affect athletes um, and wider in the anti-doping rules can be quite technical um, so it's important that the council has the skills to be able to navigate um, you know through the making of rules you know through the submissions to be able to submit um, and to be able to discuss you know what's going on internally but also to be able to talk to athletes about um, what their concerns are and to be able to relay, relay that back into um, the processes that WADA has. So uh, we'll get to it soon, but you know, legal, medical, nutritional, um, past athlete representation work, like these are all really important things that we need to make sure that the council has moving forward uh, because we need to make sure that the council is effective. Uh, so that's the purpose of group three um, is to look at who we have in group one and group two um, and then say okay what skills and diversity do we need on top of what we already have. So for group three, um, what additional skills and diversity does the council need? So in the rules that we have um, for the athlete council and, and specifically for group three we've listed um, what we think the skills and diversity are um, and there might be other skills and other diversity as well but these are just the ones that, that we've listed um, so far. So skill wise you know obviously being familiar with anti-doping um, you know having past experience in an athlete committee or with athlete representation um, you know those are, are really important and then you sort of drop into you know some of the functions of WADA and some of the ways that the athlete council will be able to input so and, you know, if you have skills in communication, education, um, you know, financial skills, uh, you know, that's really important. Obviously, there's a lot of legal things that happen within WADA, so human rights, legal, um, medical, nutritional. If you've been involved in um, athlete engagement or athlete outreach before, that's a big part of what the council needs to do. Um, and also, if you've been a member of the the WADA athlete committee too, um, we need to ensure that there's some continuation of what we've been doing um, and some transfer of skills from the, the current uh, WADA athlete committee into the council. Um, so, you know, that's a, an important skill as well. Um, diversity. Uh, and so this has been one of the things that we've struggled with only, I guess both of them really, um, having only a 12 member committee at the moment, you know, increasing our size to 20 allows us to bring in a lot more skills uh, and diversity. So, um, you know, Diversity is incredibly important when you're you're sitting around a committee table. Um, you know the better the, the diversity, the the wider the range of views often, and you know then you can end up with with better decisions um, and better outcomes as a result. So age, background, culture, disability, ethnicity, uh, gender, nationality, sport, um, and you know there's more diversity in there. Um, you know these are the things that we've listed down. But if you're applying to be in group three. Um, like I'd really encourage you to articulate what you think your skills are and what diversity you do bring to the to the council um, because those are the key factors for you know the 
the appointments panel um, when they're making a decision. So, you know, please, I would be clear what, what you believe your skills are um, and also what your, your diversity is as well. So el eligibility, so, you know, if you want to apply, um, so essentially the eligibility is exactly the same as the rest of the council. Um, you're going to have all the same rights as members of the council. You know, you can run to be chair, you can be on the foundation board, you can be on all the standing committees, you'll have, have votes in the same way. Um, so you have exactly the same, same say, um, and the eligibility is essentially the same. Um, so you have to be over the age of 18, um, you must not be provisionally suspended or ineligible, you know, serving a, um, a sanction. Uh, you must have in the last nine years uh, been an international level athlete um, as defined by the code. Uh, so that's one of the key things is in the last nine years, you must have been an international level athlete. Um, and also a candidate, uh, because we've just been through the election process. So if you've just been through the election process and you weren't successful, uh, you can obviously stand um, to be appointed uh, to the council as well. So just because you haven't got through the elections um, doesn't mean that you can't stand. So so please, if you did, um, I would encourage you um, to stand because this is another opportunity to be on the council. Um, members of the IOC, um, Athlete Commission and the IPC um, Athlete Council are not eligible to apply because they have the a set um, five members that are allocated to them permanently uh, within Group 1. Um, so. There's a few other small rules, like the, the working language of WADA is English, um, so it's really helpful if you speak good English. Um, and the last one, there's just, we have a terms of reference and you're going to have to follow the terms of reference, and, but that should be no problem for, for anyone. So the, the main things are over the age of 18, um, not suspended um, and have been an international level athlete in the last nine years. So you have the skills and diversity, um, you've decided that you want to apply, you now know how to apply, um, and or you know that you're eligible, I should say, so how do you apply? Um, and so this is, the timeframes on everything this year are really tight for setting up the council. Um, so how do you apply? Um, you, the candidate, must nominate yourself um, you don't have to be nominated by anyone. Like this has been a bit of an issue in the past. There's the, you know, you have to get nominations from from different bodies or different persons. But now for this group three, you can nominate yourself. Um, so no one else has to nominate you. You don't need to be nominated by your sport or your federation or your athlete committee. It's you that nominates you. Um, and you do this um, by sending the the information that we need um, to WADA to that email address there. Um, by the 30th of September. Um, so you only have, well, I'm in New Zealand, so it's 21 days. Um, so you have 21 days to to get your, your application in. Uh, and so, yeah, please keep that in mind because it is a tight time frame. Um, you need to send in a CV or biography. Um, you need to send in a cover letter. Um, and within that cover letter, you also need to confirm that you meet um, the council eligibility criteria, which we've just gone through. Um, and also you need to just confirm that you have the time and ability to take part in um, the activities of the council, because what we don't want is, you know, members to go through this, this process um, and then to be on the council, but not have the time to be able to contribute um, and to be able to represent athletes and, you know, increase the athlete voice within WADA. Um, so make sure that you, if you're interested in applying, make sure that you do by the end of the month um, and make sure that you include um, the information that we need there. Um, so that's how, how you go about getting on the Athlete Council. Um, the next part is how is a candidate appointed and who actually does the appointing? So what we've done is we really wanted um, across the the athlete council, um, we wanted athletes selecting athletes. So whether that's you know in group one, you know with the um, IOC and IPC, you know with their commissions and councils um, appointing members um, themselves, or whether that's through the election with athletes and or athlete representative groups um, electing the athletes. 
um, when it came to the appointments, we also wanted athletes to be appointing athletes. Um, and so that's why we've set up this Athlete Council appointment panel, uh, which will be in charge of the appointments and making the appointments. Um, so the majority of the panel will be athletes. So there's essentially three people on the panel and <clears throat> two members of the Athlete Council will be on the panel. So one member will be elected by group one from their members and one member will be elected by group two from their members. Um, and so those two members will make up two thirds of the athlete panel. Um, and then within WADA, we have uh, the nominations committee um, and their job is essentially to do this work across WADA anyway. So they have a lot of skills and uh, working through nominations and making uh, proposals to the, to the executive committee about who should be, um, you know, the independent members on WADA's Exco, um, who, should be on various committees and so on. And so this is this is their sort of scope of work and you know their professional role within WADA. Um, so we really wanted to, to lean on them um, to help us with the process. So one of their members um, will represent them um, on the athlete panel as well. So we'll have one member from group one, one member from group two, and one member um, who's not an athlete um, from the nominations committee. So the Athlete Council um, appointment panel will hopefully be set up in the next week. Um, we're just working through that at the moment. Um, and so what will the panel do? Uh, so the panel will need to do an initial skills and diversity analysis of what skills and diversity we have within groups one and two. They will then receive the applications from you um, and compare what your skills and diversity is against the desired skills and diversity needs of the council. Um, they will then consult with the president of WIDA because it's good to know, you know, what the, the strategic direction of WIDA is and of the council is. Um, so there's a consultation phase there as well. Um, and the panel will conduct interviews of candidates, um, check on, check their references, um, carry out any vetting or background checks, um, and request further information from the candidates. Um, after they've done all of this, um, they will then decide on who the successful candidates are. And so it's quite a, a detailed process that they'll go to. It's, it's not just you know, a quick look at the CVs and we think this person is, is suitable or not. Um, they do have the opportunity to you know, set up interviews, um, to look into to background to make sure that details are correct, um, because we do really wanna make sure that um, this is fulfilling its function of filling any skills and diversity gaps or adding to any skills and diversity that we think we need on the council. And so it's really important that this appointment panel, um, you know, does the work in the space to make sure that we're, we're getting people that really want to be on the council, um, that have the time to do the work um, and that have the skills and diversity um, that we need. So it's going to be a lot of work for the appointment panel. Um, I've, you know, there's been some figures of hours and hours of work that have been thrown around and, and it will be an intensive process for the three members um, that end up being on the appointments panel. So here's just a, a timeline um, of, of what's happening. Uh, so these are the steps for how we're going to establish group three. Um, so there's a, a public call of interest. Um, the deadline for you to apply is the 30th of 30th of September. Um, group one and group two need to meet in the coming weeks to appoint their representatives on the appointments panels. So that will happen this coming week. Um, the panel will then have to meet to determine its own processes. You know, obviously it's a little bit different if um, you know people are spread out all around the world. And so they're going to need to, to set their norms and work out how they're going to deal with this process. Um, and so they'll have to do that in September. And then they'll receive all the, the applications after the 30th of September, um, and they'll be able to start their, their review and interview process, um, and also their consultation process. And so that'll take from um, the 30th of September to the 9th of December. So it, yeah, it's like I said, it's a pretty detailed process, um, and there's a lot of work in there. Um, and obviously the panel members will be spread around the world and they will have to interview 
people that are also spread around the world. Um, and as someone in New Zealand, I, I know all about the difficulties of time zones, um, as I'm sure you all do. And so that work, um, we've allowed hopefully enough time there. So it's just over two months for them to complete that process. Uh, and then the successful candidates will be advised um, in December. And so it's the appointments panel that makes the final decision. It's They don't make a recommendation to the EXCO or foundation board or someone else. It's actually the appointments panel that does the review um, and also then also makes the appointments. So it's it's their final call on who these seven appointed members of the Athletic Council will be. And just like that, once that's all done, um, we will have the Athletic Council um, set up and ready to go from the 1st of January. So Group 1 and Group 2 are already in place, um, and it's this appointed um, members for Group 3 that we need to work through, and they will be ready to go by the 1st of January. Uh, and the Athletes Committee that we have will be no longer. The Athletic Council will start its work, and they'll be able to elect a new chairperson. Um, once they, they sort that out at the beginning of the year um, and start working as the Athlete Council within WADA. So um, really big changes from you know what we are now to what the council is going to be. Um, but it's an exciting time and you know looking at the amount of athletes that applied um, to be in the election um, and the engagement that we've had from international federations, athlete commissions, I, it's great to see you know so many people wanting to be part of this council and, and seeing um, the benefit that this can bring to athletes in the future. Like we, we need to have a strong say for athletes within WADA and within anti-doping. Like they are really important um, issues that we're dealing with. And so, you know, please, if you're an athlete, um, please put your name forward to be appointed. Um, encourage other athletes to do the same. Um, and it would be really great if we get a, a lot of people coming forward for this as well and we give that appointments panel a lot of work to, to go through the applications. Um, so yeah, please please think about putting your name in and please encourage others too because it's only by people being involved and being passionate about this that it's gonna be a success. So thank you very much for listening. That's, well, it's taken a few minutes longer than I thought it would. Um, so now, I'm here for questions, and we also have Stuart and Florence here for questions. Um, I, I guess um, to to you two being experts in this, have I missed anything, or is there anything that I'll ask the first question, and then we'll hand it to Stuart to moderate. Florence, have I missed anything that you or need to highlight anything that needs to be covered? Well, to be honest, uh, Ben, I'm very impressed. I think you you, you were very exhaustive. It's uh, it was a lot to cover, um, but uh, no, I mean I'm I'm happy to to help answer any questions you 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 may have um, either on the on the appointment process for Group Three or on the future work of the council. But uh, on my side, I don't have anything to add at the moment. You were very clear and and, and very exhaustive. Stu, do you have anything you, you wanted to add, or have you got any? You can you can run the moderation here, so I'll just hand over to you. Yeah, thanks, Ben. No, I think you you covered everything perfectly, um, and I'm glad you bought a little bit of time because there were very few questions, and now they're all rolling in quickly. Um, so why don't I try and read a few of them to the two of you to provide some answers, or or me if necessary. Um, first question is: Could you discuss the time commitment expected of an athlete council member? And also, how frequently would these athletes meet, either in person or virtually? You want to take a stab at that, Ben? Yeah, sure. So this is a, a difficult one to answer. Um, it's sort of an answer like how long is a piece of string. Um, so there will be two in-person meetings per year, uh, and so that's you know one day, possibly two days. Um, per meeting. On top of that, you know, we have a number of uh, virtual meetings and that really depends on, you know, what the workload of the committee or the council is going to be. Um, but then the, the rest really is up to you. Like we, we want athletes that are engaged and that have the time. Um, so there's a lot of opportunities that come from being on the council. Like obviously if you become the chair, um, that's a rather enormous amount of work. Uh, and you'll be sitting on the executive 
committee as well. Um, two of the members will need to sit on the foundation board um, and the foundation board you know, meets multiple times a year. The executive committee meets at least three times a year. Um, and then, you know, if you're a member on the athlete council and your expertise is, um, let's say science or medicine or something, then you also have the opportunity to be or placed from the wider athlete council onto another um, standing committee. And so, you know, whether if you're a, a doctor, then you might be on the, the medical standing group for wider or you know if you're involved in education then you, we have the education standing group and so they also meet um once a year um and some of those groups also have working groups on other things um so it depends a little bit on how involved you want to be and on top of that there's also we do outreach or athlete engagement work um so you have the opportunity to go to a major events with wada um to you know to talk to athletes and to engage with them um and there's other programs that you can be involved in as well. So it, it really, the minimum would be two meetings a year and online meetings. Um, the maximum is a huge amount more. Um, and it's probably somewhere in between, depending on the time that you have uh, and how engaged you want to be. Thanks, Ben. I think that answers it perfectly. Um, Flo Donalds, maybe you could answer this question. Um, can you tell us what the terms are for membership of the new council? Yes, yeah, so members are elected or appointed for three years, but um, they have the possibility to run three terms in total, so a total of nine years, three times three years. Thanks, Florence. And then the, the last question we've got listed here, um, so please do feel free to submit any further questions you have. Uh, I think this is a good one for you, Ben. I think we, we all know the answer, but I think it's best coming from you. Can, um, member, excuse me, can appointments to group three come from existing athlete committees of an existing IF or NATO or any other sports body? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and we would encourage that. Um, so that's one of the, the skills that we've actually listed in there as well is that um, you know a skill is that you've been involved in athlete representation or with an athlete council um, so you can if you're involved in an athlete committee you can definitely put your name forward um, the only restraint on that is IOC and IPC um, commission members can't because they're already um, taken care of in group one but if you're in any other commission or committee the athletes are in the world you can definitely put your your name forward you just have to have been a um, an international level athlete within the last nine years and fit the other eligibility criteria great and then uh, another question um does the athlete committee today or the council in the future do they have independence as to what type of issues they decide to progress or are things handed from water management and the executive committee is the council used as a sounding board or could you give some examples of what the council excuse me what the committee in the past uh, has achieved what they've worked on and what the council might take forward yeah good question um and it's it's both really um but i think it's it's changed a lot in the last six years uh so i i would describe it as that the the wider athlete committee at the moment has its own work stream so we have we have projects which we are running um, and which we've you know been the initiator of and the the leader on, um, and then obviously we work with wider um, and wider staff in bringing those to life. Um, but then there's a lot of work that happens within wider, you know, obviously um, that we are I guess more a sounding board on. Um, and one of the things that we've been trying to transition from is being a sounding board at the end of that process to being involved right through that process. Um, so what's a good example of that? A good example of that is, you know, so all anti-doping rules are based on the World Anti-Doping Code. Um, and so the last code review round, um, you know, we had a member um, that was on the code review team. So then we're in the process, you know, it's not being brought to us later on. We actually have someone in there that's representing athletes um, and having a say um, instead of, you know, being able to just review something at the end. And we're really pushing hard within WADA to make that um, the sort of the norm throughout the organization. So, 
you know, making sure that athletes evolved involved in decision making from the start. In terms of our own work, um, probably the two big things in recent years have been uh, the Athletes Anti-Doping Rights Act, um, which we initiated and then got across the line back in 2019. Um, and we've also then on the back of that been working on establishing this um, Athletes Anti-Doping Ombuds position. Um, and we're just in the process of setting that up as well. Um, and another one is at the moment there's a we've been asking WADA to do an initial assessment on human rights, um, and you know we don't have the capability or the capacity to do that. Um, so essentially we talk to WADA about that, and then WADA's you know going out and and sort of engaging and commissioning that work. So there's yeah both is the the best answer. Thanks, Ben. I should probably stop saying that this is the last question because new ones keep popping up, but maybe this is the last question um, and it's an excellent one. How do athletes or anybody who wants to share views or ask questions get in touch with members of the committee or the council in the future? Um, I was just going to say you can just have my email address and just share that in the comments. Um, so at the moment, there's, there's a few ways. Uh, and this this is always a little bit of a tricky one, and it's um, there's always a lot of discussion about how we can increase our engagement and how we can you know be more available. Um, so you can contact us through the website. Um, Wada has a new website, which is a lot better than their old website. Um, and so you can go there, and if you go to the athlete committee page, there'll be a um, an email there. I think it's Stacy's email, and you can email Stacy, and then Stacy will. Um, put you in contact with whoever you need from the the athlete committee. Um, we're all on social media, so you can always contact us through through social media. Um, you can email WADA directly, um, or we organise an annual forum at the same time as the the WADA symposium normally. So you know, come along to you know one of the things that we're organising there. Um, and there's a lot of major events that we that WADA has a, a booth at um, and you can also engage with us there because there's normally athlete committee members or in the future athlete council members there. Um, you know, there's been discussion around, you know, us having our own sort of portal, like I've tried a, a Slack group for a while um, that didn't, I was just a bit slack with it, so it didn't really take off but um, I think we're always open to better ways to communicate to athletes and better ways to engage with athletes um, you know in the you know the landscape is always changing around you know social media and you know how we can engage so always open to ideas thanks Ben that um, that concludes all the questions but Florence has one yeah, no, just to, to complement what uh, Ben just said on, on uh, where to find information and, and on our website. Um, so pretty much all the information that was presented by, by Ben uh, through the slides uh, ca can be found on our web page on the Athlete Council. So at the moment we have two web pages, one on the current Athlete Committee and one on the Athlete Council where the, we explain the process for the different groups, who has been appointed on groups uh, one and two, um, and the timeline for, for, for group three as well. Uh, we also have a section on uh, frequently asked uh, questions, so please uh, feel free to, to, to visit that um, if you have any, any further question or if you want to check uh, the information that was, uh, that was provided or if you can't, can't find it, you, you'll find it there. Is that our questions done, is it? That that's it then no more questions thank you very much over to you okay um so that wraps up our our webinar um it, it, that's actually quite a good segue talking about um how you can contact us so yeah as france said you know please go to the website um please you know contact me um i think on the, the um, information that's been emailed out anyway um you'll find i think all of us our three emails might be on that i definitely know mine is um so yeah, if you have any questions about the group three or the athlete council or the athlete committee, you know, please get in contact. Um, the key thing is to note that applications have to be in 
um, to WADA by the 30th of September. Um, so, you know, please do apply. Um, we really do need, you know, engaged athletes um, to be applying. And, you know, it, it is what you make it. And we have this opportunity now to, to really, you know, increase athlete representation and voice within WADA through the new council. Um, and so, you know, if we as athletes want to make it a success, you know, we have to get involved and actually do that. So um, please apply. Please make sure it's done by the 30th of September. Um, and a, a huge thank you to Florence um, for all the work that you've been doing um, and also joining us today on the webinar. Like um, Florence has, has worked endless hours on getting all our rules and systems in place. Um, so thank you very much. And Stu, also thank you for making this all possible as well and for all the work that you're doing. Um, yeah, there's, there's really good people in WADA doing a lot of work to make this happen. So, um, you know, thank you to the, to the two of you um, for joining us today. Um, and just one last reminder from me, um, there is a survey that you can fill in or that you should fill in um, after this webinar. So, so please, um, once you log off, please fill that in um, and we will have more webinars coming up in the future. Um, and I would hope that the council will also be ho hosting webinars next year. So this should be an ongoing thing. Um, so please stay tuned to see what um, other athlete webinars we have coming up. Um, and that's a wrap. Thank you so much for, for joining us today and have a great day or great night um, wherever you are. So thank you very much.